With lifted hands, let us lift them up. We bless you, King of glory. We honor you. We lift up our worship this morning. We lift up our praise. Can somebody worship the Lord with your mouth? Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you, we worship you. Out of our bellies proceeds worship and rivers of living waters. Udano ne mando le horaku sabade bredo krabe de bres. Keda da manda braso keta patos. Kela bano bredo brika pula barebos. 
our heart is full. Because you lavish us with goodness. Therefore, we honor you. We love you. We glorify you, our King. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can someone give the Lord praise in this place? Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Worship team, thank you. Let's remain on our feet. Let's remain on our feet. Psalms 127, verses number 3. I greet you all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Psalms 127, verses number 3. If you can help me on the screen here as well. Psalms 127, verses number 3. Can you project it for me here? 127 verse 3, 127, 127 verses number 3, it reads as follows, I'm going to read from my translation here, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Verse 5 says, happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. Happy or blessed is the man that has his quiver full of them. A quiver is a bag where a warrior keeps his arsenal or his weapons. It's called a quiver. That is where David took five stones and stacked them. He stacked them in his quiver. When a man goes to war, he carries a bag. This bag is called a quiver. When he gets to the battlefield, what he does is he reaches to his quiver and he pulls out the weapons that he has. This psalm here says, a man that is blessed is a man who has a quiver full of sons full of sons so these sons are not just human beings if they are viewed spiritually but they become weapons in the man's hands David a man is blessed when he has that bag weapons Mr. Ballistic bombs or hand grenades or what you may name ama weapons. Because I got the man that is blessed is a man who goes to war with a quiver full of sons. The true measure of a man is not what he has done, but it is how much he has multiplied himself in others. The kingdom is not about addition, it's about multiplication. Paul says, imitate me. There's, a, there's an imitation. Because Sunkulukula Rafuni products will be infiltrated as generations go by. That's why you can't be creative. You can't be yourself when it comes to the things of the kingdom. You deny yourself. That's the first principle. You deny yourself. You take a grace that is not yourself. You multiply it in your own generation. So, the greatest achievement a man can have is to multiply himself. What is the difference between addition and multiplication? Because a growth and multiplied is different from a growth and addition. You can get the same number 100 from adding, and you can get the same number 100 from multiplying, but it's the system. In addition, you can add 1 and 2 to get 3, but multiplication you don't add. You repeat the same thing. So kingdom grows by multiplication, not addition. God will not add black on white and blue on green. He multiplies white. It's the same white, but magnified. 
So there's a difference between adding and multiplying. The Lord added. The church multiplied. You can add people, but you must multiply disciples. You can't add disciples. Because the same culture that is trapped in a father must be multiplied in the sons. In reality, when, when a man has his quiver full of them, when a man has his quiver full of them, you will learn who the men of David, they fought like David. They worshipped like David. One of them, little Paramiswa Alwa, until he couldn't lift up a sword, but he didn't let go of the sword. He learned that from his father, David. Because David is a man who never let go of the sword until he cut the head of Goliath. So the kingdom operates on the principle of multiplication. Blessed is a man who has his quiver full of them. A man will not be ashamed if he has raised sons. He will not be put to shame. Why? Because they will confront the enemies at the gates. So even when he remains in the house, his sons will go to the gates. And when they get to the gates, they will confront the enemies. We are in a season as a church where God intends to multiply men in our midst. To Paul, to Titus, Titus 1 verse 4. Uti to Titus, mine own son, in the common, in the common grace. Uti mercy and grace be multiplied towards you. Matthew verse 5, I left you in Crete for this reason, that you put the things which are wanting in order and ordain elders in every city. He left his son. There were things he didn't do, but he left his son there. And he tells him, the reason why I left you is for you to continue. Don't do your own thing. Do what I didn't do. She spoke very well. When Solomon took over, yes, we can bless God. When, when Solomon took over, though he had his own vision of running the kingdom, but he remembered, same principle, Elisha. When Elisha took over, God said to Elijah, anoint Elisha in your place, and Jehu in the place of Ahab. When Elisha took over, the first thing Elisha did was to anoint Jehu to complete his father's assignment before he begins his own. God is giving us grace and mercy in this house. We are seeing him raising different people, sons after the order of this house. Each and every house has an order. And we pray that everyone who rises here rises after the order of this house. Not after the order of another house. After the order of this house. So that we multiply. We don't add. We multiply grace. We don't add another grace. God is raising people. And I consider myself as happy. I consider myself as blessed. Because I'm seeing God filling my quiver with a kind of sons that will be able to confront the enemies at the gates kind of sons that are going to stand there at the gate and confront the enemies. When David went to the war, my figure called by Bailey, cousin Gaga Goliath, he pulled out a sword and he almost cut David. When his men, his sons saw, by again with David, but he, he, you are old now. I'm not old. But with David, you are old now. When so grow is that a circle to a point which you alone you, you are equivalent to one thousand soldiers. Imagine is that David. When David appears, Kwagu equivalent to one thousand men. So if there were one thousand soldiers plus David, Funu two thousand. Gobu David. Inga Akopelu solely killed a thousand, but David put to flight ten thousand. Why? Because A had to one thousand. So each one kills his own thousand, which made ten thousand. So David, the Batigan, who you equivalent to ten to one thousand of us. If they kill you, go find the Babula one thousand soldiers. So stay home, because if they kill you, they will have quenched the lamp of Israel. You will understand from those languages why. Are pastors of, of, of churches called stars? Why are churches called lampstands? Israel, 
We will have no hope if you die. So stay home. Stay on the board. This is a strategy of how to conquer. We will go to the gates and confront your enemies. You remain behind because you have lost strength, O oh king. Your strength is now in the mind. We want to receive a son of this house this morning. We want to bless God so much. To raise these people. I'm so blessed, Bazalwa. I'm so blessed even by the people. Tell us Bashai Lizang. God bless you. God bless you. Mama Kosi, God bless you. When I see our vision, I'm still going to present it, is to have an apostolic hub in each province here in South Africa. Each province. We are here in KZN. We are now in Johann in Gauteng. We are going to keep popping. If you check our cover photo in our Facebook page, you will see locations with our logo inside. Because we, we're going to have that. Whether you believe it or not, this one does not need your faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to happen. When I welcome a son, I will ascend after he's done. He's uh, an intercessor. I want to greet my son, Pastor Mzobe, from Cave of Adulam. Let's clap hands for him. I want us to put our hands together and welcome my son, Minister Spaman Jamafu, as he ascends the podium to give us the word of God. Come on, Bazalan, you can do better than that. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. You deserve all glory, you deserve all honor. In the name of Jesus Christ. You alone are God. You alone deserve to be praised. We lift you up. In this moment, we lift our hands. We pay homage to you, O eternal King, you who reside in Zion. To be considered your own in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. May your name forever be lifted up in Jesus' mighty name. We give you glory. Amen. You may be seated, Basalani Kamilika Jesu Christu, Ose Nazareta. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Uh, to stand before you and share the word of God. With humility, please help me appreciate. By standing on our feet, we Nazareth. You can do better than that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Kakulu. Amen. 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 I pray the coming of Jesus Christ as a intercessors. We don't be in this also the school of first time visitors. The coming of Jesus Christ as a all protocol observed. Allow me also to greet my brother, but the coming of Jesus, um, from this um, so be. Let the last mission is under control. Amen. I will speak. I will be very short, but the last mission is under control. In preparation for next week's 
service. Amen. Sizo Bulanje, Hebrews chapter number 11, verses number 1 to number 3. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse number one, Basala Nigia Fundega Litina. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse number two. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse number three. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Amen. Key words, Bazalana, in this verse, Lafayan, through faith, and then we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. Amen. Romans 10, chapter, chapter number 10, verse number 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Amen. I want to speak, Bazalan, about two things. Ekamendiga, Jesus Christ, and Nazareth, and by the grace of God, try to explain to them about them so that you understand completely. I want to speak about faith and fear. During a conference, yeah, faith for great exploits. Amen. We were taught extensively, especially by our father, Ekamendiga, Jesus. What we call is only possible. Noma is, a, is something that is a byproduct of the sponsorship of the Spirit of God upon us. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So now you have to understand, basically, faith and fear function on similar but opposing premises. Amen. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. No a good report that is brought by the word of God. Amen. And fear comes from a bad report that is brought by your surroundings or what is seen reported to you by your five senses. Amen. So your five senses will tell you the reality of things that will sponsor fear in you. Hallelujah. But the word of God will speak to your spirit man uh, and then it will bring about a conviction that, 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 that brings to, rea to a reality things that are not seen. So now faith is, 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 a, it is, a, it is an evidence of the things that we hope or we hope for. Umufund amplified is Okaza if faith, one of the words that I use there, to explain faith, so that in the so show is in the sense, one of the words that faith is likened to is a title deed. Amen. Umalite is an assurance. It is a title deed. Umas kulumang a title deed. So kulumangento, that is proof. No mangento, a screen seki so so good to your own land without you having to present a piece of soil. No ma umshabati no chani or whatever. Nestini to me. In other words, when you possess a title deed, it is an assurance enough or a guarantee enough. Without me seeing, I know that you possess or you are an owner of a piece of land. Amen. So faith functions on the same premises. That whatever the word of God declares, it is truth and final authority over your life. Whether you have touched it or not. Whether your senses understand it or not. But because the word of God declares it, it is so. Now, let's go verse 3, or chapter number 80. By faith, you understand that the world was framed by the word of God. So, the word of God is the beginning of everything there is. Utu John chapter number 1, nothing that was made was made outside of the word of God. Amen. So, now we need to understand what when we are saying we have faith, it is from, it stems from the speakings or the word of God. Hallelujah. So now, why is it that we need faith? Why is it that it is important for us to, to, to have faith? So in the Bible, I want to relate it to what God is speaking, especially in this season, in these days, especially in our season. 
Hallelujah. We understand, but we have been taught to be, after the fall of nations, which happened in Genesis chapter number 11, after God disowned nations, of which we have been extensively taught about. After sons of men, but let us raise and structure a so figure in the heavenlies, which we now understand what there was a worship structure and that led to the fall of nations. That led to God disowning nations because nations were trying to pioneer a system that worshipped other gods besides Yahweh. Amen. So after that action, Uncle Uncle needed to find a remnant. No man needed, no man, that necessitated Uncle Uncle to find a group of people through whom he is going to reestablish his kingdom. Because what we need to understand, before us, a minister, so a ministering before us, God is a king. God is interested, ultimately, above everything else that God is interested in, dominion is the first. Hallelujah. God is eternally so. He's forever interested in dominion. Anything that comes against that, anything that tries to, to disturb that, is seeking to disturb the eternal plans of God, which is dominion. So, now when the sons of men decided to build this structure and bring about foreign kingdoms, no more exalt certain altars that are seeking to disprove the authority of God, God disowned nations. And then, Genesis chapter number 12, verses number 1, you begin to find what the uncle, uncle begins to call Adamu, so that through Adam he will pioneer a nation that will be remnant and a nation that will continue his legacy, a nation that will carry out his eternal plans. Amen. Amen. So now, through, through, through Abraham, God intended to find a nation for himself. He was intending to create a nation, a people through whom he can display his authority as a king. Amen. Amen. So now God was trying to reestablish authority in the land by finding a group of people who are going to understand his eternal plans. A group of people who are going to understand what is it that he intends to achieve. Amen. So now, when Ungunukulam is Abraham, you find that he calls Abraham out of, of, his, of his comfort zone, of a system that is used to, and then I will show you, and go to a land which I will show you. Amen. And then now, Abraham, your Puma, from his family, from his uh, a setup, no an environment that is used to, to go to a place he doesn't know, but being led by God. Now, that is a sign of faith. Amen. Now let's take a pipe and unkun kulu se figure again a kena and then unkun kulu se kuluma now se amchengisa. Now what is amazing? What I want us to take note of: Uti, the Bible clearly states, Basala no Uti, there were people occupying the land that God was promising to Abraham when God promised him when when God promised it to Abraham. Hallelujah. So let the father no Uti get in go stand the number the landlord. I have tenants. And then, I, and then you come to me and you want to rent space from me. And then I tell you, Guti, this is your space. While there are other tenants occupying that space. And then we sign a lease. Hallelujah. While there are people uh, occupying that space. Now, in the Zogni, assurance, Guti, on this date, even though there are people occupying that space, but from this date, I will have access to that space. It's a lease that you will sign. Now, when you begin to sign a lease, you begin to sign an agreement that states clearly, Ukuti, you have privileges or rights over the space from that number no from that specific time stated by the lease. So Abraham needed something similar to assure him, Ukuti, when I speak, no more when I point the Kenana, I need to point the Kenana Pesquando Tizeni. That is an assurance to me that indeed I will possess that land. This is actually so crazy that Abraham, he, he even showed it to Isaac. His generations were pointing Israel, but they kept on saying, this is our heritage. This is what God promised us. This is our territory. While there are occupants in that land. Now, 
In Genesis chapter number 17, Genesis chapter number 17, verses number 8 to verses number 11. This is where God reassures Abraham, as I promised you, and then go to a land that I will show you, and then through you, I will birth nations. And then through you, I will pioneer a worship system that will regain honor to my name. But also through you, I will reclaim the earth. I will reclaim territories through you. Now, Usea Shogutike, let the Bible go verse number 8, chapter number 17, let it And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession and I will be their God. Now, what you need to understand, God is interested in the territory, but also God is interested in re-establishing himself in the hearts of men as God. As the one the, and the only one true God. Amen. Because now if you read now, the Sakona Amanyama systems, the Amanyama worship systems that have been established, now God wanted to re-establish his throne by securing land that will worship him, that will sing praises to him. Now what to verse number 9. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. How is this covenant established? Verse number 10. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed and after thee, that every man child amongst you shall be circumcised. This verse is very important. Verse number 11. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. Now, when God was giving Abraham assurance over Canaan, he said, in, 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 in our terms of today's uh, 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 world, of the land that I am promising to you, now his signature, every man child, and their descendants, they shall be circumcised. Now, circumcision is similar to them re noma resigning or noma lease of the territory that God promised to Abraham. Now, to 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 who descended after noma who descended from who Abraham from this time onwards. Circumcision to them was a reclaim, no more, was re-announcing once again that we are legal occupants of the land called Canaan. Now, because territories don't respond to your emotions, God understood what territories won't respond to their to their knowledge. Territories won't respond to their degrees, no matter to their to their educational experiences. Uh, territories won't respond to how they feel or who they think they are. But territories respond to covenants. You need a legalizing factor because territories are not just governed by men, but they are spirit to understand. Who did the council from which we come from is a legal council, and we were given right and authority over this land. Now, when you come to me reclaiming this land, you need to come with a covenant, you need to produce a title deed. And then now, Paul, we are Paul, like chapter number 11 of Hebrews. What in our faith is a substance. Faith is the title deed of things hoped for. What are those things hoped for? Oh, Peter asked Jesus, will you at this moment restore the kingdom to us? Who said to just a God that one was? It's God is army. Now you begin to understand what the Jews are primarily concerned about the kingdom of God. Now when Paul said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. He's talking about the kingdom. Now, you will find what I'm talking about, Tuguti, 
The circumcision was a signature. No ma. It was a token of the covenant between God and Abraham. When it was time for my Israelites to to, to, to number four, the promise to be fulfilled. And so Abraham, which my Israel to occupy the land of the Canaanites. You find Ngulungulu speaking to Joshua. And before you approach that territory, the book of Joshua, you will find what God speaks to Joshua and then he tells him to circumcise all men. Because now what happened, now the left generation of the Israelites that was present at that time was a generation of uncircumcised Israelites. Now let me tell you how that came about. Little Bible, they came back we learned. I think it's Numbers chapter number 13, 12, 13. Chapter number 12, 13, 14, Lapo. Where they came to the land. Little Bible, and then Umo said, well, okay, I'm a spice. People will go to a Canaan by your assessing land. How is the land actually? No, but I'll get a report. Little Bible, out of the 12, 10 of them, they succumbed. No, but they gave in to fear because they allowed their senses what they saw, what they heard, what they touched to dictate to them the nature of the land. Little boy, belly, about 10, my boy, but hey, those people are giants. Those people are mightier than us. When we looked at them, our eyes began to explain to our mind that these people are greater than you. And to them, you are like locusts. Now that informed fear in them. And then they said, there is no way we are going to occupy that land. Now, the Bible says, this is Bible again. And then Caleb had another spirit. Other translations will say, he had the spirit of faith. Because now it was only by faith that they could have conquered the land. Now, faith is equivalent. Number faith is spiritual circumcision. We're still going to read verses. Faith is spiritual circumcision. Now, Caleb possessed in him what gave him the right over the territory of the land of Canaan. Hence, he said, let us go up at once. Hey, something in him something in him refused we are too small against those giants something in him resonated with what he saw when he stepped into that land the spirit that was upon him wanted to dominate and exercise authority over that land because he understood by matters of of covenants I belong there Now, you will find what Kulukulu explicitly tells Joshua to circumcise all the males in their camp before they went and approached in Ganga Jericho. Amen. This was so that as to grant them access legally so into the land that he promised to Abraham. Amen. Now, when we come to the new covenant, almost after the death of Jesus Christ, we no longer seek physical circumcision. Romans chapter number 2, verse number 28 and 29. We no longer seek circumcision to exercise our dominion over the land, but we seek circumcision of the heart. Now, this is what the Bible says, verse number 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, because now what do you need to understand, Uguti, being a Jew outwardly, limited the kingdom to, number two, Ikenan. Amen. Circumcision only spoke of the scope of Ikenan. Only spoke of the scope of physical land. When Jesus, number when Jesus, when Jesus, when Jesus commissioned his disciples, which were then his apostles, his scope of dominion was very clear. At the end of it all, we need to conquer the world. Now, if we are to be Jews inwardly only, we will be limited to Canaan. 
But if we are to be to be dominions, no, if we are to dominate the whole earth, we need something greater than physical circumcision. Now, this is what Paul is speaking about here. Who said, neither is the circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Verse number 29. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision that is of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of them but of God. Now we are seeking circumcision of the heart which is faith. What is faith? Faith is a title deed of things hoped for. What are we hoping for? The coming of the Messiah. We are hoping for the restoration of the kingdoms of this world to God and to his Christ. Galatians chapter number 5 verse number 6 enforces the same truth. Galatians chapter 5 verse number 6 for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, no uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love. When we come to Christ because now the dominion scope or the dominion mandate has moved from Canaan only but we want to dominate the land, not just the land but we want to dom dominate all there is. Amen. We want to restore what was once given to mankind. We want to see the kingdom of God in its entirety. We are no longer seeking circumcision of the flesh, but we are seeking circumcision of the heart, which is faith. So when we talk about you having faith, we're not just talking about an experience. No, we're not just talking about a feeling. Or no, we're not just talking about a, a, a frame of mind. But what you need to understand what we, well, as soon as faith is, 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 is spoken about, we are talking legal matters here. We are talking the language of territories. Because there is no way the kingdom of God will find expression in our land should we lack faith. Corinthians, second Corinthians, section number four, verse number 13. Now, the circumcision of the heart of faith is sponsored by the Spirit of God. This is the reason for which, when Jesus left and commissioned the disciples, go and tarry until you are baptized. Because now he wanted to give them. No, he wanted them to be imparted with the spirit of faith. Little by belly, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, therefore we speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, faith is a result of the sponsorship of the spirit of God. Hence, it was necessary before the gospel was preached to the ends of the world, for the saints to be baptized with the spirit of the living God. Amen. Because there is no way you can exercise faith without the sponsorship of the spirit of God. Amen. There is no way you can exercise faith without the sponsorship of the spirit of God. Faith is a result of being led by the spirit and truth. It's the same thing that uh, let us open John chapter number 4. Let us open John chapter number 4. About worshipping in spirit and in truth. John chapter number 4. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Verse number 24. John chapter number 4, verses number 24. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So now this is why your faith should be as a result of the sponsorship of the spirit of God. Amen. 
Faith is not, Masala, what you need to understand about faith is not convincing myself that the carpet I'm standing on is black even though it is white. No. It is believing. No, it is if the word of God were to declare that that carpet is black, whether my eyes see it as black or not, but to me, reality or fact is, it is so, as the word of God declares. Not because I want to now convince myself and think, hallelujah, it is, it is something that it is not. But if the word of God so instructs you, if the spirit and truth dictate something to you, what your senses report to you is irrelevant. But what becomes truth to you is what the spirit of the Lord leads you to believe. That is faith. Faith is not just pointing at a random item without any base or, or, or without any foundation or background and just declaring something is what it is not and convincing yourself because you have said so. No, it does not work like that. Amen. It needs to be sponsored by the word of God and the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Now, when we have faith, there must be signs. James chapter number 2, verses number 26. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. For as the body without the spirit is dead. We don't say you are dead when you close your eyes or when you can't move. But we say you are dead as soon as the spirit or your spirit leaves your body. Then you are declared dead. Amen. So now we can't just say somebody is dead with guesswork. What assures us that your body is no longer functional or dead, or your spirit is no longer part of your body. What activates faith? So faith without works is dead. Amen. So now, convincing yourself of a certain fact is not sufficient. Amen. To say you have faith on something and there is nothing to show for it is not faith at all. Amen. Now, faith needs to have works. Faith needs to have results. Faith needs to configure you to be somebody you were not before you encountered faith. Now, I want us to read about the works of faith. Hebrews chapter number 11 again from verse number 4. Now you begin to see here, what did faith begin to achieve in men? Amen. Is it not that faith began to create? No, is it that the law who called amongst men? He learned to David a cool man guy or my open and no Goliath. Now, Goliath, according to his senses, it was natural for him to be afraid. But David was endowed with the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God led him to make him, no more led him to make him understand, this man has no claim over this territory. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? For him to disrespect and dishonor the armies of God. We are here, we bear a mark in our body that the territory we are defending is ours. Now, who is this Philistine to try and take what is legally ours by force and by trying to exalt himself? As to also to, to cause fear amongst us. Who said to my own Philistine as Sugile? Or he said in Pikachu. Who met him Philistine as Sugile? He means he has no right. I go into a man's abegui advantage over us. Usabu isu faga su seti. These people don't understand. But while I was in the wilderness, I injustice tried to happen. We passed go zimvu zikababa wam. A bear of nowhere came out. Kalbam bangal tuengul. I did the same to Ingonyama. Now who is this man to come and try to claim territory that is not his? I'm speaking about faith of Barcelona because we are engaging on a building project. And now you need to understand, Guti, for us to be assured of the project that God handed over to us, you need to know that by faith it has been accomplished and it is done. Amen. 
Now, it is only going to be sponsored by faith. If we are going to try and claim land by any other means, we are, we are, we are, we, we are just saying mere empty words. But it has to stem and spring from faith. Hebrews chapter number 11, verses number 4. Now, let's take it by faith. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. Now, what you need to understand, Barcelona, about this record this is, this is a record that Paul begins to pull out here. This is something, normal isn't all, that struck, normal that struck a mark in the realms of the spirit that they are forever recorded. Amen. Now, we begin to read, normal, we begin to learn and understand from this scripture, Ukuti, somebody's sacrifice was recorded in eternity. You can sacrifice to a level where it is forever recorded. Now the Bible makes it clear that with your carnal efforts and your carnal mind, you cannot achieve such. In the end, the umnikeloga Cain ube set apart. Ube more excellent than that of Cain was that it was by faith. Now Abel began to show the works of faith, but because when you if you want Barcelona to really understand this, you need to make reference of this original scripture because you will find out at those times there was no point of reference for them to say it is culture for us who believe in God to sacrifice. Amen. Now this means now Abel, Abel, Abel only gave an excellent sacrifice being prompted by the Spirit of God. Abel sacrificed on a level unimaginable. Even though his dad, his blood still speaks with the man. Because of his offering, be, being led by the Spirit of God. That is why it is recorded by faith. Now, what you need to understand, when you read that scripture very carefully, you will begin to notice that Abel's offering was so detailed and so specific, it could not have been otherwise, except he, it, it shows what he, he was led. He was informed. If there was, no, not, if there was no formal way of sacrificing, what then could have informed him to sacrifice in a manner that the Bible records as excellent? It was sponsored by the Spirit of God, which is the Spirit of faith. I'm saying this, Barcelona, because God will lead you, God will prompt you to make sacrifices that will ignite fear in you. God will demand sacrifices by your physical and cognitive understanding when you calculate and you try to balance things out, a report will come back to your mind to bring about fear and say, this does not make sense. Amen. As we are engaging in this project, Barcelona, we need to live by faith and faith alone. Everything on Zion, you need to be led by the spirit of faith because it is a token of our dominion over the territory. Also, it is a token of our promise that what we are doing, we are not doing in vain. What we are doing, we are not just doing haphazardly. We are building a throne for a king. We are building a throne for a king. And a king will have a permanent establishment built by us amongst us. That is not to say now we are trying to house and box God or in any form. No. We are just saying we are giving God legal platform for him to display his glory perpetually in our city as according to the demands of this season. Now, if you are going to just try and achieve these things by your physical efforts, by your affordability, by trying to fit things into your budget, you will dismally fail. Because if you, if you read the scripture, you will begin to see, Wuti, it is possible that Cain might have been, cal cal he might have calculated, Wuti, let me offer this and 
try and keep the good seed and the good produce so that I can replant it and then uzo uzo kwanda okuhle in the land but that was recorded as lack of excellence yena wabela the other side being prompted by the spirit did exactly what he was led by the spirit of faith to do and his sacrifice was written even today we are speaking about him you can't speak about sacrifice and ultimately not speak about amen because his sacrifice was excellent because he 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 was ngelango tshela mhlawumbi ngasho ukuthi he was literally flying blind there was there was no guideline there was no structure there was no there was nothing for him to fall back on to say i am doing this because of that i'm i'm saying these things i'm teaching this way because god will demand sacrifices to you that will not make sense to your immediate senses and it will only be by the sponsorship of the spirit of faith that you can make the necessary sacrifices for this project and for this season there was a time in my life where i would make sacrifices it did not make sense i did not know that god was preparing me for such a time as this there is nothing i am not willing to give to his majesty i'm not saying that trying to make you maybe view me in a certain way i'm bringing to you testimony it was not an overnight thing it was something sponsored by the spirit of faith i cannot tell you how many times unkunkulu will prompt me to empty my wardrobe i said i think it's good i will wear the same thing every sunday gibe ihlaya gibe inhlekisa ekhaya bazi bangi mdubu kumthengeli impahla growing up i'm just thinking showing i'm saying this thing because this was my training i was not aware what i was doing at that time but it begins to make sense now as the spirit of god is increasing demands upon us when the bible speaks about worshiping in spirit and in truth it is speaking about a sign that will set us apart in the same way that by circumcision you could set a Jew from a gentile so that must when it come when it came to the land of the israelites it was clear by that mark ukuthi who belongs here who doesn't to a point ukuthi a young man a young boy could face a giant I don't know ukuthi how small he was in size compared to Goliath but he was obviously very small if kings men of war trained armies ngokuthi uphumile wakhuluma bebe saba ngokuthi uvelile engashanga umuntu engatheka ngamuntu when Goliath showed up it sprang up fear so deep it crippled the whole army but when David came being sponsored by the spirit of faith he saw a fair fight ai 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 abanye babebona ngazathi the scales are tilted babebona ngazathi david is on a losing side is on the losing end of the battle u david and i sing a fair fight he sing his match hi 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 in actual fact he sees him as nothing compared to the authority he carries now sponsored by the spirit of faith i don't even know if he was completely aware of what he was doing when he went to that brook and picked five stones i i maybe his senses began to speak to him to say hey when at what are you doing with a stone to a giant who carries a javelin i god am sabekana na uthi mina when usake mnge ngenqhuka nangomkhonto i come to you in the name of the lord who is army you have to fight ngaba basalwane by fight or to david i can run through a troop i would think i want get to gang ngaba basalwane by fight there are things that you can begin to achieve that are not achievable by your physical strength it is only as a result of being sponsored by faith before god leads you to certain truth to certain parts like johan i think it's revelation chapter number 4 he will call you to higher grounds first hence god is calling us to come up here to ride over to spend time in his words in his prayer so that our faith may be increased and built in him because there is something that the lord wants to achieve Hey we must learn there is something that the Lord wants to achieve in our land. There is something that the Lord wants to do in our midst. 
Hey, what was the wants to break in sand the bars of iron? He wants to break gates. He wants to dash away nations. There's somebody that needs to be dethroned. And we need to enthrone a king who resides in Zion. Should we lack faith? We won't be able to achieve such. So now the Lord is calling us to higher grounds. He's calling us to be led and to live by the leadership of the spirit of faith. Because he will demand. There is nothing God won't demand from you. If you are serious with really walking in authority and really displaying his kingdom, there is nothing he won't require from you. Nothing. Nothing. So now little by belly, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. This is a man who had no background. I can't come to him from this about offering. But he gave an offering so accurate. It was recorded in Zion. Oh. Let us read the next verses. Verse number five. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had his testimony. That he pleased a king. Verse number six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You don't just seek a king anyhow. Because of another thing that you need to understand about a king, the kings are sought after. You seek, you pursue, you seek a king. He likes to hide himself, hence we have to seek him. Now, you can't just seek him anyhow. They, no matter if you are without the spirit of faith, you are seeking him will be, will be in vain because you will seek him little by little. If you are to seek him, you need to seek him diligently. Then you will reward, you will receive the reward of the king. Verse number seven. By faith, no one being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now this verse was is speaking of the radical obedience of Noah. If you continue to read, come to verse number eight. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, which he should, after received for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he went. Rebbe Little by belly, Abraham went out from his comfort zone. He left his city. He left his normal surroundings, what he's used to, and he went to a place he does not know. Now, his senses were explaining, trying to make him understand, Abraham, you need to sit down and reason now. Where are you going? You have a wife now. Why are you, you are even taking some of your relatives with you. Where are you going? Utemben, now we are going, but by, sponsored by the spirit of faith, he just kept on walking. What was, it might have happened that Sarai might have asked to go to Abel, see happy, and then he kept on walking. He did not know whether I was going south, west, west or north, but he kept on walking in obedience. Without faith, it will be very difficult to obey the demands of the spirit in this season. Hence, you need to charge your faith. You need to build up yourself. You need to build up yourself. You need to edify yourself. You need to build your faith. 
because it is by faith. Faith is our token of the covenant. We won't take over the territory outside of faith. Now, I'm here to confirm what has been happening to you, what has been happening in your heart. God has led you to a place you do not understand and know. I'm here to confirm to you that it is him leading you. And God has asked of you a very expensive kind of obedience. It is him. By faith, obey. And God is asking of you a sacrifice. That might not make sense when you calculate and you begin to budget. Or when you begin to fit things into your budget. But he is, it is him. I mean, it is him. It is him. You need to be obedient and be willing to sacrifice by faith. Someone might be asking themselves, That is, should not be your concern. Your concern should be activating and building and edifying yourself to reaching a level where you have enough faith to just do it. To just jump in the deep waters. I know you do not know the way. There is no, you would have loved to be given at least a map. At least a sign. A direction. After this, you will begin to do one, two, and three. And things will work in your favor. But I'm here to confirm to you that it is him demanding of you. Some of us will be, God will demand a higher sacrifice than what we pledged. God will begin to demand things that won't even make sense to you. Why is he asking me of this? I'm here to guarantee you and I'm here to confirm to you that it is him. Obey. The king is calling you to higher ground. When God begins to ask ridiculous things of you, it is because he wants to now trust you with the kingdom. Amen. And people who carry and exercise the authority of the kingdom are people of faith. Without faith, there is no way you can begin to understand and utter the mysteries of the kingdom and begin to function in a way you're supposed to be functioning as a kingdom trustee. Amen. I'm here to confirm, it is him. He is the one calling you to those heights. Obey him. Obey him. Obey him. Obey him. By faith, obey. Little by belly. Even though he had no map, he had nothing to confirm his direction, his way about. To a point where he began to point land that had occupants as his own. He taught his son, that son, that is our land. The son might have also asked, there is a whole civilization there. But he said, no, nonetheless, son, we bear in our, in our bodies, we bear a mark that confirms that that land is ours. Peter Murray's back has been given to us by grace. It is ours. And by faith, we are going to express his kingdom. We are going to reestablish his ways. Our city has been corrupted. Foreign altars has been raised in our midst. But a bread will arise that will seek to display his glory and his kingdom. A generation filled with faith. A troop of people filled with faith. With a kind of belief that they understand what we are not turning back. We are serving an eternal king. Hence, he is calling you to higher ground. Hence, he is calling you to higher ground. For this land is ours for a possession. Before I sit down, let us read Barcelona. Ooh, 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 chapter number 4. The last two verses, I think verse number 29, if I'm not mistaken. So that you begin to understand that why are these things happening? Of the same chapter, chapter number 11, I think verse number 29. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. 39, I'm sorry, verse number 39, I'm very sorry. Verse number 39. Thank you, Master Jesus. I will read from here. And all of these, though they won divine approval by their faith, did not receive the fulfillment of what was promised. What is it that was promised? The kingdom. Verse number 40. Because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us. 
so that they, these heroes, should not come to perfection apart from us. When God promised the kingdom, his eternal kingdom, he had me and you in mind. He wanted us to be part and parcel of what God is doing throughout the ages. He wanted a fingerprint to be laid by me and you to be part and parcel of his promise because he had something better and something greater in view for us. Won't you want to live a life beyond yourself, beyond waking up, going to work, beyond running your business, beyond, beyond raising a family, beyond just doing normal stuff? Won't you want to strike a mark in his eternal kingdom? Won't you want to make a contribution not to say that without it, God won't achieve what he wants to achieve. But to be part and parcel. To be recorded in this book of the giants of faith. Obey him and follow him. I know it's not easy to just follow like that. But if you are to be trusted with the kingdom, you need to be obedient. And you need to be willing to sacrifice beyond what, make, what might make sense to your mind. Because the project you are engaging in is greater than me and you. The project you are about to engage in is greater than me and you. Hence, the Lord is calling us to higher ground. There is a side of his kingdom that he wants to display to you. There are secret mysteries that he wants to reveal to you. But he can't trust you lest you have faith. How are you going to display or show your faith? By sacrificing and being obedient, which are some of the works of faith. Faith without works is dead. You need to do something as an action, as a response to what you believe God for. Being prompted by faith. Abel gave a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain. We need to be obedient, Masala, amen. And we begin to find out that Abraham was led to leave his home country, to come to a place that he was not even aware of. Little, even after all those great things were recorded, men sat in the den of lions. Some men were recorded. Some men are recorded of, day of doing mighty, mighty exploits. Enoch is recorded. He was translated. He was translated from one reality to another because of his fellowship with God. He could not be relevant to his immediate nature to a point where he needed to be translated. before I but It is through faith. Even though all those things have been recorded in Zion, those people were not given everything. A portion of it was reserved for us so that me and you can be part and parcel of the recordings of the giants of faith. I was a good by faith. A group of believing believers, a group of convicted Christians, radical kingdom minded group of people, resurrected, raised an altar for God through which the whole nation began to see. That display of the glory of God. Kuma recorded in the books of history that a radical group of generations sold their land, sold their cars, sold their belongings, gave their all, and did their accounts in account of the kingdom of God. God had me and you in view, and He wanted us to partake of such a great privilege. Be recorded in amongst the giants of faith. Hence, the Lord is calling us to higher ground. Another guy saw me as Bellela. I was going to work there and I had flu. And he began to ask me, What in Gibuan Contona to Puma Sondueni? God was a pet on Kushan. I said, The kingdom I serve is too great. I can't try to fit it as to as he. Is it meaningless to me? I serve a very high kingdom. I can't just, I can't minimize it to flu. Not to say God is not able to heal flu, but I'm saying I am concerned by greater things, more weighty matters. I, hence, the Lord is calling us to higher ground. 
Hence the Lord is demanding sacrifices in this house. Hence the Lord is leading us in a path. We do not know, but let the Bible go back on in jail and no man do. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Not me, a man can walk in this path, but this path is walked by people who are endowed by the spirit of faith. Obedient men, men who are willing to die for his kingdom. Dead men. May we all stand up. Hi, hi. Hi. Respond to the call. Respond to the call. It is him that is calling you. Respond to the call. It is him that is calling you. Some people are hearing me speak. And an interest is being sparked in their hearts. And something says, I need to be part of this kingdom. I am here to tell you, respond to the call. Some people say, I see this cat being told to move from where they are to join forces with us. Not to be political in any way. But I am just uttering what the spirit of the Lord is leading me to utter. Respond to the call. Some people, the Lord is demanding sacrifices that don't even make sense. Respond to the call. Respond to the call. Respond to the call. Some people, God is calling them to higher realms of prayer and seeking Him. Respond by faith. It is Him that is leading you. It is Him that is leading you. That faith will be your token. To exercise dominion in the territory, respond to the call. Respond. To, the Lord is calling you to higher grounds. Your life is about to be translated. You need to respond to the call. You need to respond to the call. Let us all pray shortly, Basalan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us plead our allegiance once again. And let us once again respond to the call. Call Amite by heaven and many at all. We are here, we are yours. Holy Spirit, may you sponsor us with the spirit of faith so that we will follow you wherever you lead us. I mate peleme kuta pai vele me riato. Pana maria kote pai melete penia hose. We plead our allegiance. Someone lift up your voice in prayer. Everything we are belongs to him. Everything we have belongs to him. After they had offered in 1 Chronicles 29 verse 14, David said in prayer, they gave more than what was expected of them give us the heart give us that heart give us that heart give us that kind of heart so that your name may be praised in our city, in our town, in our nation in all the locations that we hear, just like you did in Jericho, Utu Rehab, Sizuil and Zintukulunas and Zeshanes at Tutumela, with the kings of this land, their breath left them and their hearts failed them when they heard that you were approaching our land. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Kula de Barona Mando Bariha Sole Dakapado Sinatai for speaking to us in such a manner. We give you praise and glory. I want to pray with someone who is here, whom the Lord is inspiring them. 
to give a sacrifice towards this project. You have just been touched uniquely today in your heart. And the Lord is saying, do it. Please run to the front here. I want to pray with you. There is someone here. Your heart has been pricked. Some of you were fearing. Some of you were now doubting. Some of you were now making excuses. But the Lord has touched you differently today. You are saying in your heart, I'm going to do it. Please run to the front. I want to pray for you to receive grace. I want to pray for you to receive grace. I want to pray for you to receive grace. When you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. When you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. I'm releasing myself to you, Lord. 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 I've just been touched to make a sacrifice for him. A sacrifice for him. God has spoken so much about sacrifice. It's only a dull ear that will not hear how God has spoken. Lift up our hands and close our eyes. Father, I pray for grace. The people who are standing here, let them receive the grace of God. For them to be able to bring to pass that which you have inspired in their hearts. Let it not come with trouble. Let it not come with murmuring and complaining. But let it come from a willing place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise and glory now and forevermore. Let us clap our hands as they take their seats. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Can we celebrate God, Mazama? Come on, Christ Tabernacle. Can we celebrate our God? You know, it's, it's, it's different when God begins to treat you as his own son. When he began treating Jesus as his own son, he demanded him to go to the cross. He waited for him to reach a stage of sonship. When he reached that place, he said, what I want from you, there are demands from us as a church. I believe we have reached a place of sonship in this house. It's us who have not seen it. God, because attacks embrace. And you will fall by the wayside because you have not seen what God has made you. God has seen it. The enemy sees it. Let us begin to embrace it. We are at Gilgal, Bazaran. The nerves are shy. We need to offer our foreskin so that the territory will respond to us. And part of offering our foreskins is being sacrificial. It's being sacrificial. It's being sacrificial. Utu James, what is your life? Utifana no moose. What is your life? Why do we spend so much on our lives and on ourselves? and not make the kingdom of God a priority. This is the season and this is the time for us to build for God. When we build for God, we need to for ourselves. Because we are building. A sacrifice is something that inconveniences you. That's why I'm going to say, 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 
bekufanele ngabe ngiyisebenzisele enyinto but angizoyenza le nto ngoba i'm giving a sacrifice you can't give a sacrifice and expect every other thing to flow because a sacrifice is izelo kuzophazamisa vele izelo kuzophazamisa vele so you can't say i can't give my sacrifice because i've done this and this when you intend to give a sacrifice the first lot that you receive you take out the sacrifice and then what is left you make excuses kule zezinye izinto i can't do this this man because i've given a sacrifice so a sacrifice is not a leftover a sacrifice is a first fruit it's the prime logo kunonile when it comes that's why it must be painful to you Abraham was so depressed to such a way ukuthi wayibiza nge worship le nto ayoyenza. Couldn't expect me and the boy are going to worship. We are going yonder to worship. He had to leave his servants behind. When you are going to give a sacrifice, you leave some people behind. Abraham did not even consult his wife. When it comes to a sacrifice, Bazalwa. That woman owa ukosikazi ka Nabal David what makes ela manzi for her to save the nation waphuma ngemva kweyindlu ahambisa manzi ahambisa manzi David and unabhalwa gcina emluze kanjalo David took that woman because he saw what this is a woman of noble character she's sacrificial so when we are going to give sacrifices you if 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 lonto njani asitalwa de no maybelline no nako konke okunye might have to pause Figure see natural. We might have to wear the same suits. We might have to stop buying some things because we are saying we are doing this for God. That is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. So makunya a sacrifice. It's not a nice thing. <laughs> it's not a nice thing. Like you need to a luxurious. It's not a luxury. Ah, you know what I got. It's not a luxury. You to a glamorous. There is blood involved there. There is blood involved there. There is there is there is there is killing involved there. There is loss involved there. But it in solitary after people have done the sacrifice, masebe wele lenga peshi aguayo. They are no longer the same. They are no longer the same. For you to give a sacrifice, you might have to empty your account. You might have to empty your savings. I'm trying to get to our to nowadays. You might have to do crazy stuff. You can't tell them. You can't block. I meant to tell you, but I couldn't. I, I left a boy there. I killed our boy at God's command. So you don't explain. It's not everyone you tell. Because some people will say you are a fool. Some people will say, how can you do such a thing? Some people, you might have to conceal it until it's done. Must hide your child because who he wrote is gonna kill the child. So basically, when I'm, I'm going to sacrifice into my daughter, and I show one thing on the stand, show one about to Anna, and my daughter, show one about the sin, most of me saba. God, I belong to Basaman, and I belong to a people who are fully given to Christ. When it comes to kingdom matters, it like sing a song. That when it comes to the kingdom, sacrifice is a defining factor. This one belongs to the kingdom. This one won't let God down at a critical day. When it comes to such things. You won't do that. Praise the name of Jesus. Bazalani Bible is full of people who gave their last. I don't know si tata plento yogu. And I, I, I wonder. I don't wonder. In fact, why you satane elwa anga nento ye offering and sacrifice? Because sacrifice is what keeps the engine of the kingdom running. The engine of the kingdom won't move without sacrifice. 
the foundation of this very kingdom is sacrifice. The lamb that was slain before the foundation. Before the what? The foundation of this world. So your own king is going to run by sacrifice. It's going to run by sacrifice. So I says in the edge of the chair. Let's sit at the edge of the chair because I want to be counted for something when I die. I want my name to be in Hebrews 11. I got you a chapter, Mamma Gomezu. I got you a chapter. But I want the chapter and gain about Shumel, never nigger Lilebangan. I go never Shumel chapter, not a bonga bandaba ecte out of faith. They are part of the chapter. So when you die, what are you going to be accounted for? It's what you invest most in. When I get to heaven, one thing I must be honored for is how I served God sacrificially. Sacrificially. So I want us to bring our thanksgiving offering. I want us to bring our thanksgiving offering. Let us all reach to our pockets and give our thanksgiving offering. Hey, hallelujah. There will be no song, Bazalwane. Let's just come and give our thanksgiving offering. Take your time. We will go Katanese. We get a Where's what David was a bang manga? In a she knew to know. Send Nigelera Kuligan man. Here to beg them. Kona ba chiganje na masage ko lidwa David no 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 no. Gege pela sila le masanga piga nan. That is how they were prone to giving. I pray that we get to that level. Hallelujah. I said Hallelujah. Beba zalo ni sizo nigela. Nkalu chali magelo na kuti sizo nigela. Bua na lo muni. I want to put some Kumang and Malusazo, Usazo, 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 you leave your shoes there. Yes, she is. That's all. 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 Because because it's so tiny, it's so small. Because you look hundred thousand rands, two hundred thousand. Because I'm million, but two get. I'm a million. So my cities, we are pledging. In Tengara, you can't be shocked at that level. What God wants to give to you is greater than what you are withholding from Him. They sold lands, they sold houses. They came and brought it to the house of God. Hallelujah. Can we give praise to the Lord one more time? Please be seated shortly. I'm going to release you just now. Sibonile announcement, Yoguti. Next week's in a building Sunday. Uyenzile Obabuviti.
was kumbisa ukuthi sizobe siphatheza ama bricks eh savezele inhlobo zama bricks ezikhona uba vithu yena kuzazini kodwa ngibambe uface brick lo wa 500 wena ngubambile ngoba umuntu ubamba lo kazokuthenga angeke ngibambe la wamanye ngoba ngikho lapha so ngibamba uface brick ukuthi lapha ku face brick sizobe sithenga bengibuza ukuthi yini engekha we 1000 ngathi hayi uthenga ku 2 ama face brick ma ufuna wa 5000 uthenga kanjalo siyindlu yezigwili la ikhaya asihlupheki la ikhaya la ikhaya nje asihlupheki umuthandiso into lokuthi ukuhlupheka godliness praise the name of jesus la ikhaya asihlupheki sesadlula kwisizini yokuhlupheka siyigwili kodwa siphakeme so ke next week sizobe hayi ukuthi sobe sibukwa thina sizobe sikhipha imaleni ngayo ngoba sizobe sithanda ukubukwa so be skons unkulunkulu. Langit David wanya tell how many steps? Six. Enze ne vagalok and nigel. How many steps again? Six. That is our culture. I culture ye to like I. So the next week so be stenga face brick. Now na man yok tenga lawa amanye. You will be buying those bricks. Praise God. Then si so be sit koge. Makalap wonku moon. Amen. Wonku moon to bazalan. So is fagu makalap. Worship team. Outulu ma ufagi lu makala. Sifangu makala. Bend. Makala. Makala. Wonku mundi sifangu makala. Sifangu ma reflective vest. No siya sebenza. Ukoge nje ngale ongela. E veza ubutu we are in construction. Amen. Iko nitega tengin bendige zeyo na lape muva. We have our guest speaker bazalwa. Apostle Sim Tembu. He will be here next week. Praise God. This apostle has built more than five houses. Every branch they have has a house. They have branch all over South Africa. I believe more than 50, if I'm not mistaken. Every branch has a house. Every branch. So he will be here next week delivering the word of God. My wife will be here next week. I'm here next week. We umnande kaya. So ge bonka bantu anaba like kaya. O seven za Sunday. We are kidnapper Friday. Kutu shifoni. Ukokirensa am Sunday in Tambama. We are buya. Amen. Yes. No mu ya trakwa. Kwenzega no ma inji. God and Sunday, we are all here. Ni be happy. Ni kushugelom ni guzen figa ni happy. Worship team, nice songs. To miss an ama songs, I kichi my next week. I lawa ah ah ah. Sifunu ba happy in the presence of God. Praise God. Masen pata ge bazalwane oga kesar. Ni akumbulu uti ngo July. It deadline ye tangi it. So ge end of July. It's our deadline for the first phase of our pledges. Go to lie. So we So next week, it's part of those things. So we Table will be there. Tables will be there. Next week, we are building a house for God. Amen. Let's clap hands for the Lord. Praise God. Umangu punyo agela, abazalwa na bahambayo, ubuyo bona, nubyo tutuza, umdeni, kanto tagazu no mfundo nzovu, bazo sala babona ni noma mkumalo. Amen. The men, the women, abanta basha bahambayo, sobona ni noma mkumalo, uguze samsa nene so, nke singa figiri na ngukshugana. Amen. Fellas men, we nyao zetu ke bazalwa. Thank you for coming. Our first time visitors, thank you for coming. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. As Valeni Amesho Etu, we are going to pray. Let's close our eyes in prayer. Let us all pray. Thank you, Father, for this gracious day, for this wonderful Sunday in your presence. Ospeona, nyangos vulele wona, wogu konza openly and freely. Siabonga, ituba, ne opportunity. Season. You want us to walk with an open heaven above our heads. Thank you for teaching us the principles. As of when the local reality, 
Lord, we don't want theory. We don't want the letter. We want the spirit. Because the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Thank you for speaking to us. When Ezra began to teach, he elevated the platform. And he caused the people to stand for the whole day while he instructed them in the statutes, the commandments, and the law of the Lord. We give you praise, we give you glory, for we have received such from you this day. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and we all said, Amen. Let me bless you. Please put your hands in receiving mood. I bless you, I bless your loins, I bless your womb. I bless your seed, I bless your offspring. I bless everything that has your name on it. Your kids, your family, your believing and non-believing family members. Let them receive a blessing because of you. Let it be upon you as it was upon the house of Obed Edom. When the Ark of the Covenant came to his house, he began to increase. Because you honored God's presence today, let the effect of the presence of God begin to be manifested in your life. Let there be increase upon every worshiper here. Let there be multiplication upon every person who is here today in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Let God Almighty, he who gives without content, who just gives, let him give and not add sorrow upon you. Let everything you touch prosper. Let everything you do and engage in be successful. I pronounce the shalom upon you with nothing missing, nothing broken. All this priestly blessing and its effect is pronounced in the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ, our high priest and apostle of our confession. I bless the congregation. I bless the church this day in Jesus' mighty name. And we all shouted, Amen. Go in peace. The Lord bless you all.